I feel like people are afraid to shout from the rooftops that they're in love now because you don't know if it's going to last and then there's like that embarrassment you want to save yourself from. So I feel like I see that a lot in men and women. Welcome back to another exciting episode of First Rounds and Me and today we have a truly special guest joining us. She is not only an incredibly talented photographer and photo editor, but she is also our resident on the street star and an integral part of our daily lives. My literal best friend, Jocelyn James. We're gonna be doing, we're gonna be diving into all things dating, specifically on how social media affects modern relationships, talk about why everybody needs a breakup buddy and the benefits of it, turn the tables on her with some of our favorite on the street questions, all while seeing how well she knows herself and playing a few rounds of first thing that comes to mind and fuck Mary Kill. Jocelyn, welcome to the podcast. Hannah, thank you so much for having me. You're so very welcome, darling. Um, we know you like the back of our hands, but can you tell everybody where you're from, how long you've been in LA? Yeah, I'm from Arizona, um, but I was born in Miami, so, you know, a little, little spicy <laughs> attitude in there. That's where it comes from. Oh, uh, is that where from it From Florida, from? yeah. Um, but I've been in LA for about 10 years. So Decade? I, yeah, I feel, I feel at home in the ten valley. 10 years, that's a long time. I feel like once you hit the 10-year, yeah. we've talked about this a couple of times, but once you hit the 10-year mark, that's when I you're believe. <laughs> It's when you truly like. I feel like you break through the wall. Like, like you're here for 10 years, you know who you are, you've gone through the bullshit, mm -hmm. you're one of the real ones. Like, you shouldn't be late to things anymore because you know how we, traffic was that, works. Was, was, was that a dig <laughs> at me? You'll get there, don't worry. Just a few more years. Oh, wow. And to be fair, I think we were mutually late, Hannah and I, today, right? Well, or, or is it mostly me? We drive in the same car, so. <laughs> oh, you're talking about in terms no, of getting ready. I'm saying I got home and you were still getting ready, and then you said to get ready, and I said let's go. Yeah, I'm but ready. it always works the way that like when I'm, I'll, <laughs> I'll keep getting ready until you're like I know that you're ready to leave. You're just finished eating lunch anyway. That's besides the point. <laughs> okay, so uh, Jossie, you've worked in fashion, commercial, and also the adult film industry as a photographer, videographer, and photo editor. Which one of those industries is your favorite to work in, and why? Um, my favorite is probably the commercial world because I um, really like photo editing and retouching. Um, not only is the mo it like more gratifying because I feel like I'm more of a technician than mm -hmm. like an entrepreneur or like ideas person. Like I like to just make it happen. And I like when there's like a right or wrong. Sometimes with the creativity, there's no right or wrong. Like a method to the madness almost. Yeah. I like that. Um, which... Going to the adult film industry, which which adult film star is your favorite to work with? Jeez, that's really hard. It changes all the time. But today it's Lacey Lennon because she took me to Disneyland and I do like being spoiled. Isn't that nice? <laughs> what do you mean she took you to Disneyland? Like to work? Um, just as like a... Well, thank you. Just a fun trip, trip treat. Yep. After oh, work, wow. right? Yeah. Did you shoot her there? Um... No, it was like, it was all, it was no work. Okay. I'll play. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Have you ever seen Lacey Lennon? Do you know who she's talking about? No, the only <laughs> people I know. Would have to see her naked. <laughs> then I'll recognize her. Well, I, I, I follow you on Instagram, so I see what goes on. <laughs> that's, that, that's the only dose of porn I get these days is following you on Instagram. And it's just supporting a friend. You're a good husband. Um, yeah. No, uh, <laughs> obviously Abigail Mack. Yeah. But mm, Lisa something. Lisa... I've never yeah, shot a Lisa. She's a little older, like Ryan, 50s. Lisa Ann. Lisa Ann. Yeah. Is she like very attractive for an older woman? Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's who I know. That's it. Okay. You always <laughs> wear into this. Um, Six. <laughs> what? Just like have never shot her. You Nothing to do with Justin. <laughs> Um, can you share the craziest thing that you've ever seen on set? You don't have to say names, but like, is there something wild? Um, probably just like actual sex or like anal sex. That's always pretty crazy to be like in the room for. I can only imagine. Yeah. Oh my God. What do you do? Like you just work as normal? And well, um, I used to take sex stills for browsers. Um, and so they kind of mark through the scene, uh, again, for the photographer just to take like the like the main clip photo or like the main film photo. So but, but in your head, are you like, holy fucking shit, I can't believe this is happening right now? Or are you just like, this is pretty normal? Um, you have to be professional, so it's like, But in your head? Yeah. 
Um, yeah, it's definitely like, it definitely does not get old. It's really crazy. <laughs> I mean, I can imagine <laughs> but also it does get to like a clinical point okay. where you're like, this is like a body I need, like every, like I need this to be in focus and like I have intention when I'm there too. Do you ever talk to them and say like, can you move so I can get a better shot? Um, they know what they're doing. Okay. Can you spread your ass cheeks apart yeah. just yeah. a little bit more? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. All right, let's go into dating. Um, I want to talk about dating with you, but I want to talk more specifically because we've been having like internal conversations about this for a while. The effect that social media has on modern dating and kind of like your own personal experiences within it. All right, you let's ready? Go. So, do you think that social media is turning modern society into commitment phobes? Yes. Why? Um, I feel like people are afraid to shout from the rooftops that they're in love now because you don't know if it's going to last and then there's like that embarrassment you want to save yourself from. So I feel like I see that a lot in men and women. Yeah. Like you just really want to be sure before you post someone. But I disagree. I think... You want to post them right away? Well, I think if you... I mean, once you know that you have feelings for someone... And I think it's important to, like, let other people online know that you're not single anymore. If, like, I don't know, if you want that mutual respect. Mm. It's also, like, it's it's like a almost like a social currency of being, like, this is my person. And, it, like, as you said, like, shouting it from the rooftops, like, sharing it with people. I was always really big on that. And it's just such a good feeling. It's so, like nice when someone does that for you you know yeah like, they do say like being posted like feels so good i hate to admit that but like <laughs> yeah, well we, we saw our stat the other day because it's so funny i would always post her and she wouldn't post me and then the stat said that if your partner doesn't post you on social media that they actually love you way more than someone that does get posted on social media so i was like ah kudos to you um so do, I love you, do you think that uh like social media there's so many options that people don't want to they don't want to stick through the hard time and, like, and they just go on to the next thing because there's so many options and because our attention span is so short. Yeah, it's also like a big city thing. I agree with that. Um, yeah, but social media obviously like exacerbates that. But don't you think the big city is social media because the big city has the options, social media has the options? Yeah, So but yeah, but true. Yeah. Then again, if you're like living in Arkansas, you don't really have like, no, no offense against Ar- Arkansas, but like <laughs> you don't have that. Fuck in- Arkansas. <laughs> We hate you. <laughs> you don't, even though you have like this world around you, you technically don't have that many people around you. Whereas in a place like Los Angeles, if you go on social media, half the people that you're looking at, even on your for your page, are living in Los Angeles. So like that aspect of yeah, there. Um, so that kind of leads me to my next question, actually. So I know from personal experience that social media breeds jealousy and insecurity um, if handled cor- incorrectly. So what do you think? Um, has, has your social media or, like, your partner's social media ever called, like, caused a rift within your own relationship? Um, yes, absolutely. I feel like it's ruined every single relationship I've been in. Is this <laughs> your question or is this question for Jocelyn? I feel like this is, <laughs> this is your own question. I said I preface it from personal experience. <laughs> yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely personal experience. <laughs> wow. Yeah, um, it sucks. It really sucks when you think that, like, all the answers are in someone's like following list or like in your story views um and especially when you get wrapped into that and your beliefs become like something that you can't let go of it's it's really really hard i've really struggled with that i feel like a lot of people have struggled with that i know i personally did especially with joe and like the first couple of months of our relationship i was like like absolutely even the first couple of months of marriage i would say i was like going through your followers i'm like who the fuck is this but but there's a learning curve for both and i think at first, I thought you were crazy, to be honest. I was like, why do you care about social media so much? But over time, I would say 50% of what you said made, made sense. Mm. You know, like, why should I be following somebody who I hooked up with months ago, who I don't talk to them, but I would tell you oh, I'm just supporting them. I like them as a person. Well, that's fine. But what's what's the value in following them now? If you, not that, not that if you think it's uncomfortable, but... What's the point? Well, I explained to you that like, it, why do you why do you feel it more important to support this like person that you you don't have in your life anymore versus supporting your wife when she's going, hey, listen, that makes me feel uncomfortable. But I, I think it's even a step prior to that. It it shouldn't even be that it makes you feel uncomfortable. It's just it leaves the door open for an argument for yeah. The I mean, you're leaving the door open with whoever we're talking about. 
Exactly. By exactly. doing that. So, so they still if like, I like their picture, maybe they think, oh, he liked my picture. Maybe this is an opportunity to reach out to him. Yeah. So I, I feel I, like yeah, you're, you're. I just agree that there, there, there is, there is some validity to doing research on the person that you are with Instagram, but of course, people go overboard with it. <laughs> Yeah, and it can, to your point, Jossie, it can kind of just make you feel a little fucking crazy. Like you said that I, you thought that I was crazy and it can make you feel crazy when you're going through things like that and you're like, fuck, am I being too hard or am I noticing too much or... It's also just like, um, like kind of, I don't know if either, either of you guys have like gone through each other's phone, but it's like, there's going to be something there. Mm -hmm. Like there's, like if you're looking for something, there's, you're going to find something. I 100% agree and I think... Even if some, even if that's something like you even find if is it's not real, even if it's nothing, exactly. Even if like the person that he follows is like not his type, or like, yeah, like he said, like you're totally not interested in that way anymore. It's still like a topic to bring up to ruin the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Perfectly put. I've had to unfollow a lot of people, but I have. You did. I mean, reluctantly. But you did. Yeah, well, reluctantly. <laughs> but that's how you know the fact, like, with the with that action is like that does so much for like her security or her like insecurity. So you're 100 percent right. My reluctance was in being told what to do, not so much of I want to follow. Not like letting go of like. Yeah, it was more like don't tell me what to mutuals. do. But over time, like you said, what was way more important was okay. How does it make you feel? If it makes you feel better, then I'll unfollow them. I really don't care. Okay. Do you think sliding into someone's DMs is romantic or do you think it lacks a certain level of chivalry and commitment? Um, I think it can be, I think it's okay. Yeah. I don't know if it's romantic, but I think it's a good, um, I think it's on the delivery as long as you like are respectful. Or you're like not putting in the absolute minimum effort of just like, hey. Well, you can't control where you find somebody. Well, that's what I say. Some people say DMs are like the modern day love letters. Yeah, but so say I came across your Instagram before I came across your dating app profile. Which you did. No, before. You did. Accidentally. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> oh, but that's, that's actually a good point. So I, I uh, we found this out after the fact, but I came across her on Instagram and I DM'd the person who posted you and said, who is that? So if I would have DM'd you, that was my first point of contact with you. It wouldn't have been bad, in my opinion. Like, how mm. else would I have talked to you? But... Uh, who would you have responded? I don't know. I feel like would I you have taken him seriously through a DM, or was it you took him? I mean, you obviously took him seriously because you're married now <laughs> through the app. <laughs> through the dating app. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, I think I kind of try to think back on that, and like, again, I think to your point, Joe, it would have been about the delivery, like what it what it had that said. That was Jocelyn's point. Oh, sorry, Joss. <laughs> to your point, Jossie. Um, Chelsea, what <laughs> the. <laughs> what the delivery was like if it was like half i'd be like oh my god you're so hot then i'd be like fuck off mate but if it was something like came across your profile you're so beautiful this is crazy but can i take you out on a date i'd be like maybe oh so she's blushing at her own <laughs> DM. a little more leeway with um social deliveries there's a lot of pressure like what are you supposed to say if you come up with a perfect line it's, it's easy cheesy. compliment question compliment question compliment question easy but that can come off as boring no. I agree with it, but it can come off as boring. I mean, uh, I guess if someone is really that, like, drowning in compliments, then you do have to be extra creative. But, um, like, a normal person, if you're just trying to get their attention, I think compliments work really well. Okay. Note okay. people. Note to people. Yep. Everybody out there. Write it down. Um, all right. So you recently took a break from social media after going through your most recent breakup. What do you feel the benefits of that were for you? And would you encourage other people to do the same? Um, yeah, I think the benefits were um, my – give my thumb a break. <laughs> like, this muscle <laughs> right here hurts so bad because <laughs> I couldn't stop, like, just, you know, checking <laughs> – So – Checking um, people's following lists. I couldn't stop doing it. It's honestly a problem. I'm more addictive. I, I don't want to let this go. Yeah. I need more – Context and insight into what, why you do it, and what, what do you, what's the purpose? Um, and like, does anything change? You, you you constantly do it. Yeah, like it hurts so good when I see someone who like is uh, like trying to word this safely, but also it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like it's, it validates your like negative self 
self-talk or like self, or like your negative beliefs that you have like that I had um when I would see someone new in the following list that like I couldn't compare to like I, there's saying. no way that I can validate more than like the 70,000 people that are like constantly validating this but one that's person so, <laughs> that so, I'm so talking that's about somebody that's somebody new how often does somebody new pop up there that you notice um uh, like once a week maybe so I'm just looking for that it's like a yeah once a week stab in the heart <laughs> so how often do you check to find that once a week person like daily oh like hourly probably it hourly. was getting really bad yeah I that? would consider myself an addict <laughs> did you do that when we uh, we actually talking about this the other day when we first broke up I did it for like a week and then I had to stop because I just couldn't like that was when I like fully just decided that I cannot communicate with you anymore I can't do this we have to separate if we're going to come back together then great but like wh whatever goes on with this period of time like I really need to focus on myself so I did it for a little bit but to your point that was a perfect saying like it hurts so good like I'd see somebody and I'm like what the fuck and then I, I, knew your, it. I looked in your tag things and I like go through your list and I find out who had posted you and I was like who, no one posted me. Oh, people posted you. Oh, but um, the positive mm. thing about it um, is it, like, obviously I have that relief of, like, not checking all the time. Um, but I was very flattered when people reached out to me and they're like, are you okay? Because you're missing on Instagram. So thank you, like, the four people that reached out. That's really <laughs> nice. Community comes together. Um... How many drinks, okay, we're kind of like moving away from the social media part, but like how many drinks do you think is appropriate for a first date? Um, I feel like generally speaking, one. One? Yeah. Do you think it depends on your alcohol but, tolerance? But for me, zero. Because you've got a little sober, like sober journey at the moment, Yeah, I am. How are you feeling? Uh, good. I feel raw. Mm. Raw, <laughs> raw dog in life. Yep. <laughs> I love that. And you guys are on your fitness kick too. I'm we sure are. That helps. Yeah, we, yeah. So, uh, those two things combined, you know, there's no time. To How does it make you feel? Because I always used to tell her I loved fitness because the way it made me feel mentally, not really. Like, obviously, I like the way it, it, what it does to you physically, but mentally, it just makes you feel so good. Yeah, that's probably the best part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd say so too. What did you what did you say you were on a Reddit thread last night? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what do they, what do they call Equinox? They call Equinox the Knox. <laughs> Yeah, of course. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I love Reddit. <laughs> Equinox is a, is a dating... You've heard of the Knox before? <laughs> yeah. Damn, that's crazy. Never we had never that. heard of that. Never. Oh, that well, so you, you're only new members. Oh, I get sorry. Well, yeah, West Hollywood Equinox was... Like, you used to go there all the time. Again, to the point of, like, me going, can you not go there? Because it's literally just a whole bunch of, like... No offense, but, like, fake-titted chicks walking around. I want to go there. Okay, you should go. <laughs> if you're single, you should. But it was just like, it literally was like a dating breeding ground. It was crazy. It was wild. Never seen anything like yeah, it. Was like That's what they said on Reddit. They said it's like a fashion show. What? The West Hollywood one? Yeah. It's just like. The, or it's like scene -y. It's like the palace of validation. Just. Yeah. They should use that as a slogan. Palace the, of validation. By both sexes too, because I would say 60% of their uh, clientele is um, female. Gay. Okay. Well, I have I'm a question gay. for you guys. Lay it Say there's someone at the gym that is really attractive. Is it okay to hit on them, or like what? Or like how do you do? You just introduce yourself. Do you become friends first? Do you even do anything? Okay, so we had this really lovely fellow on Monty Taylor. Do you remember what he yeah. said? Uh, so I don't remember. What he I, said. Remember I know. What I know he was an advocate of it. He was sorry. He was an advocate, and I kind of agreed with what he said. He was like, obviously, you don't want to like get in someone's personal space, blah blah blah. But you wait for the eyes. You know how like you fucking oh, you, you make oh, eyes. Oh, I hate something? accidental. This guy make a three step but, approach. Okay, tell us. Well, this is not Bible, but I, f I feel like the eyes is one. Because if you're interested in somebody, of course you're in the eyes. Yeah, you don't so drop that. So then two content. is you use a machine or a weight that's close to them and kind of say like, oh, are you using this? But just leave it at that to kind of gauge how it goes. Ooh. And then you either use their machine or just say, oh, thank you and walk away. And then you'll pique their interest. And then depending on how that goes, the third time... You kind of say, like, oh, hey, like, I see you around here a lot. I'm, I'm Joe. And then see how that goes. And then you're either in or out. So it's a long... Uh, yeah. It's, def it's a long game. Yeah. Well, think about it. If you do it, if you do everything on the first shot and it goes super awkward, that's your gym. If you guys yeah. work out at the same time, you got to change schedules, which has happened a few times b before. Do you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. My first week in, in L.A., I went to the West Hollywood and... 
there was this woman there and we made eyes and I went out with her that night. The same night? Be or, or the next night or something. That's very it was first rounds on me of you. So bad. Oh. So bad <laughs> that I would see her for the rest of the week and I was like, I gotta change the time I go to the gym. Yeah. That's it. There's definitely people I'm avoiding at the gym. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um do you have a worst date story that you can tell us? That's like seared into your brain. Um uh, yeah, I do have um <laughs> Um, just one of the most offensive things being asked how much I weigh on within the first like 10 minutes of the day. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Context, please. Um, I feel like, uh, I mean, what more do you need? I, I was just like an instant like. Com- no, but I'm comparing. saying like, okay, so say you and I are sitting down. I could say, hey, I'm a fashion designer. How much do you weigh? I have this dress. I'd like to put you in it. Or, oh, oh like how mean, much do you weigh? <laughs> like, yeah. what was the context of him asking? There was none of that. There was, n- <laughs> they were not a designer of any sort. So it was just, <laughs> hey, Jocelyn, how much do you weigh? <laughs> yeah, it was like a body scan, a look up and down. Oh my gosh, how much do you weigh? It was like that. It was like a playful yeah, question. Yeah, it seems like because you're petite and tiny that it was. In- I think it was it like was meant to be a compliment. Yeah. Yeah, but thing, also. But, which I think it's like. That could have been, like, endearing if it was maybe, like, an hour in or, like, I don't know, like, not well, you know, well, right that's up That's why a guy's never supposed to ask. Yeah. Oh it was a girl. But it was a girl. Are. Oh, it was a girl. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. So then I don't know the rules. I stand corrected. <laughs> I stand corrected. <laughs> no, I still feel like, I mean, to your point, like, it should just be, like, an hour in, maybe. But also, at the same time, would never ask anybody that. Right? Never, honestly, like, on the first date, like, oh my god, how much do you weigh? I wouldn't ask anyone that I ever. I've that. I'm with you for four years. Yeah, damn straight. And you wouldn't. I'd slap you around the head. Um, <laughs> he just sized you up and down. He was like, can I you like, buck 80? <laughs> I know how to fucking buck. Cut. We've been, doing, we've been doing something where, I, like, he'll do something really annoying and, like, I'll spell out divorce. I'm like, you got a fucking D, mate. Oh, you're you onto an I. <laughs> you're onto an I. Like, horse. You got divorce. I did something really the bad. The divorce horse. You didn't give me a letter. <laughs> You got a D and an I. But I did something up. really bad yesterday and you didn't give me it a letter like for it. It is like horse chest <laughs> What did you do? What do you mean, what did I do? Oh, yeah, but that was that was way beyond the silly little game that we're playing. Um, all right, so if you were out on a first date with somebody, what do you think they would say that your biggest red and green flags are? Um, I have more red flags than green flags. I disagree, <laughs> but anyway. Um, I think a red flag of mine would maybe be like be the dietary restrictions Mm -hmm. i feel like that is sometimes annoying for people um yeah we talk about that quite often i mean joe was you really have to compromise yeah i don't think it's a flag it's just some people are married though it's just reality yeah it's all right green flag um green flag i lost (laughs) i feel like it says a lot on the date no, <laughs> before <laughs> and after. <laughs> after she has the appetizer. <laughs> just after every bite. <laughs> that could be a green and red flag all mixed in together, truth be told. Oh, she was just oh yeah, right? On the date. <laughs> on the date. I'd be like so intrigued, but also incredibly turned And up. she could say, I'm watching my weight. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a, um, maybe being bisexual is a red flag also, and I'm going to pick a team. I'm going to pick a side soon. <laughs> what do you mean to pick a side soon? <laughs> what? <laughs> you're going to pick a side soon. You're going to stick with one team and one team only? Yeah. Okay, well, I cannot What goes to into this decision? Um, a lot. <laughs> this is a TV show in itself. I've never had someone calculate the decision like this. Well, <laughs> you just never know what goes on behind it. You're not bisexual, are you? Uh, well, you don't, <laughs> we don't know. We don't know where life's going. It's true, darling. Not yet. Um, all right. So if you could match with one person from all of history on a dating app, who would it be? Um, I feel like Bourdain would be a good, that oh. would be a good first date. That'd be a good wild ride. I feel like it'd be a long date. It would be a long date, but he'd take you to like the most amazing underground weird restaurant. I love when a date turns into like a two day hang. I always Me think too. that I see him. Really? Yeah, all the time. He's dead. You know I know, him. but okay. his I, ghost? I'm just like, he's it's not dead because I saw him. His ghost. Yeah, it's in it's LA, so. But isn't there like a whole bunch of conspiracy around people? That's what like I'm saying. People say that Tupac's still alive. Yeah, I don't know. 
But wait, so then that gives <laughs> us insight into what you're going to choose because he's a male. Um, yeah. Ooh. I think you're, yeah. Ooh. Okay. We had a but we're still counting the ballots, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Um, if Fashion Answer Me could set you up on a date right now, what would be the perfect drink, time, and place? Um, and who would it be with? Anthony Bourdain, obviously. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know if Anthony Bourdain would take me to Genghis Cohen, but I would like to go there and drink a Shirley Temple at 8 p.m. Who's, what's Genghis Cohen? It's like a Chinese restaurant that turns into like a, um, like a bar dance floor. Nice. Yeah, we should go. It's really cute in there. It's really like I always have great experiences in there. All right, I've never heard of that before, but I'll definitely have to go. Yeah, let's go. Some best friend you are. It's really close by. We should go soon. I'll do this day. <laughs> um, one thing we always like to ask people is, would you date yourself? So would you? Um, yes, I would date myself. Yeah. You're the only second person that said yes. <laughs> really? Oh no, not yes. We'll say no. No, Corinna was the only one that said no. Don't worry about it. Oh, <laughs> I lied. Um. Who I'm the person in the relationship that gets the glass of water. Do you guys have? Do you have someone? I feel like it's pretty mixed. That gets, gets up the to glass get of it. water. I feel like it's yeah. pretty mixed. Yeah. You're definitely more of the acts of service, but you're a, a little more lazy than me, so I get the water for you. It's the mix. It's the mix. The backhanded yeah. compliments this guy's oh, no, dishing was, out today. Was, all day, <laughs> every day. It was not backhanded. It was definitely. <laughs> it was a straight up. It's definitely just. an insult. <laughs> you are lazy. Mate, you got an I. We got a D and an I. <laughs> no, you already got an I before. You can give a V. Oh, so close to Does it. it like reset every night or every morning? Every day it resets. She would never okay. divorce me. The game's ridiculous. And I would never v. divorce you. We made, <laughs> a, we made a vow. Save me, Jesus. Um, all right, I want to get to the breakup, buddy, because I've been, I actually just wrote a blog about this. Um, semi inspired by you and like being with best friends through breakups, because I feel like either everybody's either helped a friend through a breakup or been the one that's breaking up and, and needed friends. So I want to ask you a couple of yeah. questions surrounding that. Um, when you go through a breakup and you call a friend, do you want advice or you do you just want them to listen? Um, I feel like I have friends that I call for advice and I have friends that I call to listen. And it really depends, like there's such a roller coaster of emotions that it it changes. Like you need that different, those different kind of pathways. Yeah, so often. But you do both for me. Thank you, Jesus. That's really nice. Yeah. I try. Um, well, kind of in that same vein, do you prefer like soft nurturing love or tough love? I'm um, definitely the soft, mm. the softness. I'm, I'm doing my own tough love in my head constantly. That's how I always can think about it. It's like we're already so hard on ourselves when we're going through a breakup and we don't need other people going, yeah. this is what you need to do. I always feel like tough love, that person has an ulterior motive, which I don't like. You reckon? I yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure they don't, but in my head, it, I think, well, why well, are you... But the motive could be that they just want you to get over it faster. Right. So, yeah, not that it's like, but it's bad, but it could be. Like, yeah, I just, I just always think both sides where... Do you want me to not be with this person because you want to have like more single time as friends, or yeah. do you f are you projecting your single life on me because you're upset? And I don't know, but I think they mean well most of the time. Um, did you? What do you think? Some of the, s the warning signs that someone is not being as supportive or may have their own agenda in mind when helping another through a breakup? Mm. Yeah, maybe just like cutting you off. Mm. When you're talking about your feelings and stuff. Yeah, just being like, this is what you need to do rather than like sitting and listening and hearing. Yeah. Um, how do you navigate being there for a friend during a breakup without being too involved? Um, just listen. Just and try and try to like keep your side of the street clean because if you talk bad about like your friend's n newly ex, you don't know if they're going to get back together. So... You don't want to say anything too horrible if they get back together. You know? Do you feel like there's a time limit on that? Do you think there's like, you like say for instance, you really didn't like somebody, you're like, okay, so they maybe not be getting back together. <laughs> but they might be getting back together, but I have to wait like X amount of time before I can start talking shit with them. Or do you just wait until the, the, the friend starts talking shit? I told my friend once that once they were like broken up, I was like, I knew he wasn't the one. She was like, why didn't you tell me? I was like, I couldn't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> well, an argument, well. I guess one friend did that and the other friend talked shit and didn't like me. 
Oh, yeah, she didn't like you. Probably still doesn't like you to this day. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> from my understanding. I know, when I told her we were getting married, she was like, I don't like him. I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you for being honest. I appreciate it. Um, not getting a plus one at the wedding. <laughs> you, you weren't going to be involved in the marriage, but I really appreciate your advice. <laughs> um, okay, best piece of advice that you would give to someone going through what you're going through right now? Um, some advice? Mm. Um, just keep it classy. I feel like um, one of my biggest regrets is raising my voice. So, yeah, no, no screaming. You can't take that some of that stuff you say back. It's just being calm and classy as yeah. you're going through the process. Yeah, it's hard. It's really hard. It's so hard because there's so many emotions going through at the same time, and like I remember, oh my god, I used to, yeah, in our break, I used to yell and scream at you. And I just didn't know why. <laughs> <laughs> poor this is baby. Poor Joe. Um, okay, so you are out LA on the street star, and you've been absolutely fucking so good at kicking it. ass. Setting the bar high. It's so it. much fun. You like it? You yeah, enjoy it? I love it. You can tell it through the video. So I want to turn the tables on you and ask some of the questions that you ask the general public. Okay. Are you ready? Um, I'm trying to think of some of the questions. Yeah, I'm ready. Thoughts on sex on a first date? Um, uh, I think you should wait. I yeah. think you should wait till the second or third. Wait till the third. Third? Yeah. Three-day rule? I like it. <laughs> Number one dating deal breaker. Um, God, this is really controversial. I might regret saying this, but... Helps the views. Let's do it. Oh, no, actually, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, I mean, it's kind of obvious, but, like, being rude to, like, wait staff. I feel like it's it's an obvious one, but it's like a really common one because it's so true. Oh, also more importantly, um, having like a really dirty car. I get it if it happens like later, but like first date, like if you pick me up, like I please don't be like shoveling bottles to the side so I can sit down. <laughs> wait, wait, don't look at me. I like that a lot because you're the bottle person, not me. <laughs> Everything is my fault today. It's so rude. Big uh, biggest pre date ick. Um, too many compliments, like being showered with, oh, fuck, I, I feel like that's contradicting what I said earlier, but like. No, you, you, you stood fast by that. You said a well, compliment's good, but when you overdo it, then that's bad. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, like if you haven't met that person yet, or like if someone hasn't met me yet and they're like, they adore me, I'm like, you don't even know me yet. But it's like love bombing basically, right? Yeah. Like a form of it. A I think it's fangirling. Oh. It's like, Jocelyn, I'm so obsessed with your with your photography. It's so amazing. Every single day. Oh, my God. I just hung up another one of your pieces in my room. Oh, my God. I slept with one of your pieces last night. <laughs> it's like you thought about this before. Okay. What <laughs> what would have to happen for you to walk out mid, uh, mid-day? Um, if, if, so, if someone, like... Maybe, uh, I don't know, ordered for me without, like, asking me. Like, I think it's I think it's really cute and it's really nice when they, like, deliver the information to <laughs> our wait staff. But, like, if they didn't ask, like, what do you want? Yeah, they just, and they just assume. So and they ordered, I don't like, know if a I steak would... and you're a vegan? Yeah. Uh, yeah. She'll take a steak. Oh, I would for sure leave. That's really disrespectful. I don't think that I would ever leave. Never. Nothing could happen. Nothing? What happens if they puked on you? Yeah, I'm, what if she's like I blackout a, wasted? I, I mean, have a date story yeah, where puke was involved. You do indeed. What happens if they... I would never leave. What if she started having sex with another man on the table? Yeah, but then the date's over. It's you not like I'm really <laughs> leaving. The date's over. Technically, well, no, I don't even like, have to leave. Hold up one second. I'm just going to do this. And then goes back to it. Well, then she started a new date. So my date's over. <laughs> I disagree, but whatever. Um, who should be more important in, in a person's life, their mother or their partner? Um, after a certain time, it's got to be the partner. I feel like your mother was should have been number one this whole time. That's mm-hmm. how you got the partner is because you respect your mother. Joe says that it depends on who he's talking to. <laughs> no, Joe said it depends who's in the room. Yeah, <laughs> who's asking me. Yeah, who's in the room? No, it's you, babe. It's you. Sorry, Jack. From the, from the moment I was born. <laughs> You. From the moment <laughs> you were born. <laughs> um, 
la, 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 la. If you were to give someone a first date tip, what would it be? Um, uh, fresh breath. Like, yeah, any, like anything to avoid bad breath. That's where the flossing comes in. Yeah. Favorite post sex sex favorite post sex snack. Um, ice cream sandwich bar, like you know, like the chocolate cookie ones mm. that are like rectangle. Yes, I do. Ooh. Yep, I like those. All right, that section is done. We're gonna do. But before we leave that section, what? Um, I asked you this, and I want your real answer. So you're always behind the camera, and you do great at that. But I I feel like you in front of the camera, it's. It's a it's a version of you I've never seen and you feel like very comfortable and confident. Oh well. Do you do you see your life and career moving more towards on camera? Um yeah, I feel like I could I could host something if someone if I ever had to like host a show, I feel like I could do that. I feel like I'm good on mic. I went to a performing arts elementary school, so I did a lot of theater growing up. I can can't exactly sing, but I can like hold a tune. I can um I can carry a seen along um i can like kind of dance not really you can but definitely like dance i can take this. a dance so next on the street i want tunes and I, can <laughs> <laughs> I can like take a dance class and like not walk out Follow midway yeah. okay. Okay. whereas i cannot um all right so we're gonna do a new segment called why men do what they do where myself and the guest ask joe questions back and forth and try to figure out why men do the stupid funny dumb shit that they do yeah uh, okay. <laughs> Jesse, you want to go first? Uh, yeah, I'll go first. Um, why do men take so long in the bathroom? Oh, well, you know how, I don't know if this is a men versus women thing. Do people meditate? For at least me. I don't know about all men. And are you talking about on the toilet or in the shower? On the toilet. On the toilet. Okay. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> you get to a certain age in life when you're getting older and going to the bathroom is kind of just as good of a moment and feeling as having sex. It's just like you get to sit there, you get to it's 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 like the highlight of the day. You're peaceful, you're by yourself. I mean, it is relief, I understand. It's a relief. That. It's it's amazing. I don't know how I feel about you comparing that to sex, but Well, they say, <laughs> well, my brother asked me this about a year ago. He said, "Um, out of these three, which is the best feeling?" <laughs> taking a shit peeing or peeing coming. feels great <laughs> and i think we both agreed that it was taking a shit coming than peeing <laughs> it's just amazing this is why we ask the questions um all right so if you're if your guy is in the <laughs> bathroom for a long time he's just really i figure enjoying that enjoying the moment no i think that he's like scrolling and cheating <laughs> no 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 i always yell out to him like did you fall in because he just sits in <laughs> oh back in the beginning of a relationship time. I would be in trouble after five minutes. I'm like, oh my God, I used to do 30 minutes in here and just relax. That's crazy. Fucking, yeah. I'm famously very fast in the bathroom. Famously. Really? <laughs> you know, you should sit and enjoy it more. It's got things to do. Um, do men really think about sex all the time or is it just a stereotype? Mm, I don't know. I mean, we think about it often. How often? Like how many times a day do you think about sex? Mm, I would say once every two or three hours. <laughs> what? I'm just. It's just depends crazy. how busy you are, but <laughs> that's less than me. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, that's less than you. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's a conservative answer. All right, just yeah. Um, why do men typically avoid confrontation with women? Or or yeah. Uh, I would say the first reason, like in a is relationship. Um, because we feel very inferior to a, a mature emotional conversation. You guys have way better tools and are way more prepared to Argue. have that. <laughs> well, have that conversation. And I feel like men, we get really insecure and, and get stubborn and defensive because we don't want to even entertain that because we know that we're not going to have the ammo to compete with you. And... That's why I think that's why we avoid it, and it's just uncomfortable for us. We're not. It depends where you're brought up, but yeah, it's fair. You know, I was brought up with three brothers, so having an emotional conversation was foreign to me. You're, you're so much better now, though. Well, I've learned from you, and I have tools to argue with you, and that's why I win now. 
we don't, okay, I was about to say, we just communicate a lot better, but <laughs> there's always a winner, right? Um, you guys are very competitive. We are incredibly competitive. Yeah. Um, why do periods gross men out so much? Uh, and be honest, you had no idea about the inner workings of like menstruation or my period or periods in general before really you met me, right? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think because we have a vision and image of certain parts that this is how it is to us. <laughs> so once you get a reality of how it really is, not that it's, it's not that it's upsetting, but it's like, <laughs> oh, wow, this is not as glorious as I thought it was. So you have to just adjust pretty quickly. And again, like, I feel like it's normal for a guy to be a little skittish at first because imagine you got with a guy and we we're like, hey, for a week, my penis bleeds. So just bear with me for a second. You'd probably be like, oh, wow, I never knew about that. Let me, let me. <laughs> and I think that also depends on the guy. I feel like guys with sisters get it. Guys with, oh. Sisters Case in point, three brothers. Are, like, horrified. But also, I'd say that if men bled out of their fucking penises for a week, then it would be everywhere. Every woman would have to be educated on it so that we would have to be able to... And you went along with the whole hormonal change. We would have to be there. The white jeans industry would be <laughs> in the tank. <laughs> but what do you mean by adjust to it? Like, what, what, what adjustment is there? Like, Well, just, like, not even adjustment, understanding. Like, it's Well, the understanding of what your body goes through, like, that was a big... A, that was a big learning curve. I had no idea. Mm. But the actual physical aspect of it, it is what it is. Like, it's well, you should just have a hell of a lot of sympathy for the fact that I yeah. bleed for a week every month. Yeah, it's really hard to get blood out of things. Yeah, yeah the sympathy I get, but it, it's not It's not like I but saw the blood and, was like, ah, and ran away. <laughs> like, it's all right. <laughs> I feel like the first time you went, ah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a shorter, ah. <laughs> Good, Josie. Um, why aren't men as adventurous with their meals? I feel like, um, it's more common for a guy to eat the same thing every day. And like, I feel like we're not like that. I feel like you guys like view it as fuel. What, what is it? What's the reasoning behind that? Um, well, I, I don't think that's true. I think that it depends what kind of guy, like a guy who's into fitness and looking a certain way, they're going to eat the same thing every day because... You know exactly. You you know exactly what's going through your body, and yeah. it's the same thing. And so vanity. And vanity, but also, uh, I think very successful businessmen do that as well because you need to get it over with pretty quickly. You don't really sit there and enjoy the food. It's like, okay, this is the time that gives me the fuel, and then I can get back to work. And I know that this fuel is going to give me the most energy. But then on the flip side, it is what kills Steve Jobs. What? Um, like too much carrot juice. Oh, is it? But like the repetition of yeah, just like pancreatic cancer from yeah. too much carrot juice. Okay. He was a fruitarian. But then on the flip side, yeah. like my family in New York, they love and eat all combinations of cheese and meat, and mm -hmm. it just I think it, I think it just matters what kind of guy. All right. Well, that kind of goes into my last question about this. Um, do you think men are as concerned about their appearance and body image as women, or do they feel less pressure in this regard? Oh, I mean, I think the easy answer is less pressure. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I feel like societally what we see, uh, how women are supposed to be, you don't see the same thing for men. Like mm -hmm. even with athletes, men aren't comparing themselves to athletes. It's just fairy tales to us that these guys are amazing. But for women, men think, oh, because there's a model in a magazine that all women should look like that. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a double standard there. And I think men, for the most part, don't care. I'm really glad that you explained that. Um, all right, Jesse, we're going to play a couple of games. How does that sound? I love games. Give me that kicker. So we're going to play a game, a few rounds of how well do you know yourself? So I'm going to say something and you have to answer it. Okay? Fun. Fun, fun, fun. Okay. In my most recent birthday card, which put all other birthday cards to shame, <laughs> do you remember the full set of names that you gave me that technically belong to our fairy child? I'm going to try to get it right. Ready? Start with Hannah. Hannah Grande. No, you're already wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kardashian, Davidson, Grande, West, Winfrey, Obama, McAdams. McAdams was this. <laughs> Hannah Jane, Glasby, Feminella, Winfrey, Obama, Sinclair. Sinclair is the one that you missed. Oh. Grande, Davidson, Kardashian, West. <laughs> That's your name. That's our full name. 
Um, on a photo that you posted from our time at Dan Blazarian's house, which is a story for another day, Ooh, yeah, that um, was crazy. where I was wearing the cowboy hat, what was the caption to that? Um, I feel like it's something Western related, maybe <laughs> something like Giddy Up or Howdy or um, my partner. <laughs> <laughs> Jocelyn James, it seems like you do not know yourself yeehaw. because that was not the answer. Was it yeehaw? No. It was everyone say thank you to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. It yeah. was really good. What year did you <laughs> shave your head? Um, I think it was the win winter of 2021. It was. Um, and, all right. Wow, that's crazy. I guess three years. I mean, look how long it is. Yeah, but your hair grows so quickly. And I've had haircuts. Many. <laughs> what year did we go and see Ariana Grande at the Forum? We saw her in 2020. We didn't. And 2019. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and last one. This is a bit of a random one. Do you know what Honduras was the first country to ever ban? Because her history, her heritage is Honduran. Wait. What they banned? Like they were the first a country, product or like? They were, f the, they were the first country to ever ban this act. Oh, um. There's no way she gets this. Yeah, I'd have no idea. <laughs> Smoking indoors. Oh, really? Isn't that crazy. I'm so shocked. Read that, read that fact on the way over here and I was like, oh. we should bring it back. They've also have one of the oldest clocks in the world. <laughs> really? And their bird, that's their national bird is the macaw. That's beautiful. I feel like I have seen a macaw in Honduras yeah. and monkeys. There was also bats. They have a large bat population. Big, huge lizards. Sounds like a fascinating place. Huge. Huge. Um, all right, we're going to play first thing that comes to mind. I'm going to say a word. You tell me what f the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. Okay. The day Joe and I got married. Um, overcast. That's <laughs> yeah, a good one. <laughs> it's a good one. Big overcast in all the pictures. Delilah. Baby. Vixen. <laughs> We don't talk about that anymore. <laughs> Pura Vida. Oh, delicious Italian food in my belly. Mm. Vegemite. My favorite toast condiment. Saltburn. Um, murder, murder on the dance floor. Ooh, that was a good one. <laughs> All right, I'm going to play Fuck My Kill and then Rapid Fire. All, All right. right, you ready? Dating apps. First round's on me, Hinge or Bumble. Well, I guess I would marry first rounds on me <laughs> because they've been so kind. <laughs> so kind to me. That's what a good marriage takes. <laughs> um, fuck Hinge and Ghost Bumble. Mm. All right, celebrities. Courtney Kardashian and Travis Barker. Kaya Gerber and Austin Butler. Or Bradley Cooper and Gigi Hadid. Um, kill um, the second one. Kaya Gerber? Yeah. Kay. I'd marry them. Weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> Marry both of them at the same time. He, that's the game. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, Mary, what was the last one? Sorry. Bradley Cooper and Gigi Hadid. Because um, they're allegedly dating. I would also ghost them. <laughs> I'd fuck them. I don't know if we would ghost all those couples. I'm not into it. it seems like Joe's fucking everybody. Yeah. <laughs> no, I married You can ones. have them all. <laughs> I married, then I fucked. And, and I'm going to kill Travis, Travis Barker. Barker and, yeah. I'm going to tell him you said that. I would hang out with them, with Travi you and would? Courtney. I <laughs> don't know if I would. I would not ghost, or, or I would not marry, or F. You heard it here first. Um, men. Jake El... How do you say his name? Eldori? <laughs> El <laughs> Damn it. What, how do you say it? I always get it wrong. Elordi. Elordi. J uh, Jacob Elordi. Pete <laughs> Davidson. Eldori. <laughs> Eldori. I can't help it. Um, so funny. Jacob Elordi, Pete <laughs> Davidson, Jeremy Allen White. Um, I would uh, marry Pete. Um, I can save. I can save you. I can save him. Okay, you can do it. <laughs> um, I would kill um, Jeremy, and I would absolutely have intercourse with Jacob Elordi. You answer. <laughs> Who would I do? You answer. Yeah, you answer. <laughs> I think you want to. <laughs> what were the options? Jacob Elordi. I don't Pete, know who that is. Th he's the tall Australian fella. Saltburn. He hasn't seen it yet. Um, well, I would fuck Pete Davidson. I would kill... Jeremy Allen White. Mm -hmm. And I guess I'd marry the other guy. But you go. 
<laughs> Joe knows that I have a thing for that show with me, Alan Wright. Oh, yeah. You go. Um, I would... Hmm. I feel like the way that I would way fuck Jeremy Allen White. Mm, okay. I would. Mar- I, t- I feel like I have to marry Jacob because he's Australian, and then we would have yeah. beautiful Australian babies. Yeah, they would be so tall. And then I, oh, they would be so tall. Mm-hmm. And then I'd have to kill Pete Davidson, but I really don't want to kill him, so I'm just going to ghost him. Is that okay? I feel like the way that Jeremy Allen White handled his like divorce and then like instantly dated a pop star was kind of yucky. That's why I don't really fuck him. I wouldn't marry him. I wouldn't okay. want to be in a serious relationship with him. There's something about him that's just like Fair. very attractive. But I think it's like the I whole think it's just because he's always sweaty when he's being like photographed or filmed. I think it's from the bear and from Shameless. Yeah, like he just plays like a really dirty like dirtbag character. Yeah, and he when he screams, I feel like you're like I could scream back. Yeah, or I could save you. Yeah. Like I don't know what <laughs> it is. Um, all right, we're gonna do the rapid fire, and then we're pretty much done. Does the amount of money that a man makes matter to you? Um, yes, it does. Because I live in a modern world, and I also have credit card debt. <laughs> Back to the credit <laughs> card debt. <laughs> Top date night spot in LA. Um, uh, I'm gonna go with Crossroads. I would agree with Crossroads that. Crossroads Kitchen. Can you really just be friends with an ex? Um, I think I w- I would I would love to, but I don't know if it, I don't think it's possible. <laughs> What's your long? Uh, what's your love language? My love language is. Um, I feel like I show it with like, um, with what is it? Not actions. Uh, acts of service. service. Acts of service. But I understand it by touch. I love that. All right, last one. If you weren't in your current profession, what would you be doing? Um, I would be a, a hostess, a TV hostess. Gonna make it happen. <laughs> Gonna create a TV show now. That's going to happen. I think so. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for being here, Jossie. Really appreciate it. Can you please let everybody know where to find you? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram at joss.james. All right, darling, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. And check out our last episode with Macy Eleni and our next episode with Peyton and Perry. Perry. And please subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you later. Happy dating. Good job, babe.